Are you ready to become an escapepreneur? Well, you were in the right place. Welcome to the Bye Bye 9 to 5 podcast, designed by brilliant women, especially for brilliant women who want to create the life of their dreams by escaping the 9 to 5. Welcome to the Bye Bye 9 to 5 podcast, and oh boy, do I have a treat for you today. You will absolutely love my guest today. She is so full of information, and I'm like chomping at the bits to, to get it out of her. And so I am sure that you will find her helpful. And trust me, I will give you all the information you need to get to her and ask your additional questions when we're done. The Bye Bye 9 to 5 podcast is structured for women in business, especially women who are trying to figure it all out and they don't have the answers. So I bring in guest experts to help you figure it out, to let you know that you can do this, that you can actually leave your nine to five and grow a business that you really love. So our guest today is Miss Allie Thompson. She is a marketing strategy coach and consultant, as well as a Facebook expert. Now, don't we all need one of those in our back pockets? Her first business started in 2002 and still runs strong to this day. Allie has found her greatest joy in studying effective marketing strategies and helping entrepreneurs embrace their role as the marketers of their business. Wow, I love that, Allie, because the reason I love that so much is because um, we don't ever realize that when we are starting a business that we are indeed the marketers for our business. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. So Allison, Allie, sorry. <laughs> um, <Both> my name. <laughs> if you would tell us a little bit about your story, what got you to this point? You said you've been working this business since 2002. What got you there? Yeah. So we actually started in 2002. My husband and I, um, both had the entrepreneurial spirit, although we didn't really quite know that that's what that was. Um, we knew we didn't like working a job. Um, I, I, at this point, I consider myself unemployable. Like I, I, <laughs> I wanted, I needed to go out and I needed to do my own thing. And so in 2002, we actually created a business where we manufacture and sell toys for house rabbits. So people that have pet rabbits in their homes, the, we manufacture toys for their rabbits to play with. And um, we kind of stumbled across this business. And um, um, it was interesting in 2002, there wasn't a lot of information out there on how to do marketing online or how to do marketing in general. And I didn't even understand that I needed marketing. And so I was reading books like uh, Fish and One Minute Manager. And those are all great books. So very, very good books. But they're definitely way more corporate written for corporations, so written for big companies. And I just couldn't see myself in those books. And uh, one day, just out of frustration, I'm, I'm trying to put up this website and I'm trying to make all these, I'm trying to sell these toys and you know, I'm not working anymore. My husband was still working a job and I go to the, um, I go to Staples or Office Max or whatever it was back then. And, um, and I've got $30 left to my name. I got 30 bucks and I have to buy labels for the toys and I, I find my labels. Those cost about $10 and I'm roaming around just looking for like a savior in staples. <laughs> like, is there something here that will save me? <laughs> and um, I come across the book section, which I love books and I love to read. And I, and I'm like, that's how I get my information. Right. And I found this book called multiple streams of internet income by Robert G. Allen. And he had another mm. book called multiple streams of income again, back in the day, he was real popular. And he, and I'm like, but this says internet income. Wait a minute. This is a book about me. <laughs> this is a book about who I am and what I'm trying to do. Cause that's, you know, we're selling on eBay and we were selling a little bit wholesale, but we were, we were really not having that much success. And I look at the book and it costs 20 bucks. I'm like, I have $30, now $10 for the stickers. I have kids at home. <laughs> like, do I spend my last $20 on this book? And I remember just standing there staring at it. Like, how do I justify this to my husband when I get home? That I just bought a book. 
You know, like we, we're struggling to pay the bills and I just bought a book. And, um, and I did it. I bought it. I bought the stickers too. I had just enough. <laughs> I had just enough to get everything. I get home, I show him the book and he's like, great. Hopefully you'll learn something from that. He's always been really supportive. <clears throat> and I started reading that book and that, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a drink. I started reading that book and that's when I learned about marketing. And that's when I learned that I love marketing, that that's the thing I've been looking for. That was the information I had been trying to find in all of these other books was how do you talk to people in a way that makes them more likely to buy? How do you structure an offer that makes, that makes you more money? How do you connect with people? How do you find your perfect customer? How do you capture leads? I had no idea what a lead was. Um, but coming into that, reading that book, that's when just like, oh, like the, the lights <laughs> shone down and I'm like, this is it. This is, I love this. And after that, I was able to kind of hunt down. He had guest authors in that book and I was able to hunt down other books and, and just, I read and read and read and read and read and um, applied it to our business. And we were able, my husband was able to quit his job. Um, we still had tough times, you know, we all do. Um, but without that marketing knowledge, without, without me having stumbled across that book, I don't think we would have, I, mean, I guess eventually I would have found something, I hope. Um, but the marketing is what made the difference. So we could be the best rabbit toy manufacturers in the world. In fact, we were like the only rabbit toy manufacturer at that time. <laughs> we actually have competition now. Back then we didn't. Um, I could be the best manufacturer in the world, but if I couldn't sell my product, if I couldn't find my customer, then I wasn't in business. And so since then, I've had, you know, multiple um, business owners approach me and ask me for help. And it's only been in the last year that I've decided this is really what I want to do. I mean, Rabbit Toys is fine and it, and it pays the bills and it does its thing, but I, I get the most energized when I'm helping other business owners. Um, actually embrace that role of marketer and see the potential in their business and realize that I can do this and, and actually transform their business. Very nice. I love that story. So many golden nuggets in that story, Allie. Because one thing is that you took a risk with mm -hmm. your $30. You really yeah. did. And um, the risk paid off, but it was an investment actually into your future for marketing. Exactly. Yes. I invested that money. I invested in myself. Yes, you did. In my own education. Yes. Yes. So I do want my audience to catch that. Even when it seems like, I don't know if I should be doing this, investing in yourself being able to invest in your own education for you to grow your business or to learn something new that will move you further along is definitely, is definitely, definitely the way to go. Yeah. And the other thing that I, I loved about your story, Allie, is that um, you did not know that marketing is going to be your thing until okay. you read that book. Yeah. I read that book. I was home. I'm like, this, this is, this is me. This is actually talking to me. And it was amazing. Yeah. It felt good. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yes. And so for entrepreneurs out there who are listening or want to be entrepreneurs, just know that you just got to keep looking for that thing mm -hmm. and you will find it. And it will feel just like Ali said, it'll give you goosebumps. You feel like you're home, you know? So mm -hmm. keep looking for that thing. I love that story. <laughs> yes. Now I met you in a group. Um, I think it was badassery. I am not, I don't even remember now. Yes. I met you in a group and it was wonderful because you gave some market, marketing advice. I think I posted a question and you gave some really good marketing advice. And what I loved about the advice that you gave me was just that it was very simple because I love simple. That's okay. a part of my thing. It can be simple. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be hard. And so you gave me some really simple advice, 
that made sense. And you know, sometimes when we are looking, um, when we are looking at marketing, sometimes we are always looking for something that's overly complicated, but it's the simple things that are right there in your face are the things that make the most difference. So I know you work with a lot of clients, Mm -hmm. um, helping them with their marketing. Tell me what are some of the greatest tips and advice, some of the most basic tips and advice that you share with your clients when they're getting started in their marketing. Okay. So I have what I call like my four secrets of creating a marketing strategy. And this is really, it's, both online, offline, and, and I love this because it helps keep people focused because you're right, simple is better. And the, more, the, the fewer steps you have to think through, the more likely you're going to follow through. So if you're creating these big, complex sales funnels where it goes here to here to here, you know, the guys who do that stuff, they have a staff. They have, they have offices and staff and they're doing, you know, they're, they're already making money somewhere to be able to afford to put these complex systems together. So I break it down into four easy ways to, to, um, to know whether or not your marketing's on the right track and to actually strategize your marketing going forward. And number one is you need to identify. You need to identify your customer and you need to identify your offer. And you also need to identify what makes you different than anybody else. So that's the very first thing is to just sit back and say, who is my customer? Who am I? So what is my unique selling proposition? What is unique and different? Why should they do business with me over anybody else? And then what am I actually selling them? So just getting very clear on those three things. You're identifying those three things. And and just that clarity alone, because again, a lot of us want to just sell to everybody. Everybody's my client. Everybody's my customer. Everybody right. needs what I'm selling. But not everybody wants it. And not everybody's willing to pay for it. And when you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody because you can't drill down into their issues and their problems. So once you identify all of that, the next step, and this is, I learned this from that book all the way back when I learned this from that book that the most important thing you should be doing next is not trying to sell them something. You should, especially online. Now, if you're face to face with somebody and it feels right and you need in, or you have a retail store and they come in and they're putting something on the table. Yeah. Sell them something. (laughs) Don't turn them away. But if you're running an ad or you're um, making posts to Facebook or whatever, and you're trying to sell directly out of the gate, then you're turning people off. Because it, or one, it reeks of desperation. I need to make money so badly that my only um, interaction with you is going to be to try to make you give me money. Right. And, and especially online, people don't know who it is they're talking to. They don't know you. They don't know if they like you. They don't know if they trust you. Um, it's very different when it's face-to-face. But online, they can't, they can't get a handle on who you are. Right. So my, my second tip is to capture leads. Rather than trying to sell right off the, out, of the, out of the gate, you should be capturing those leads by giving value first. Right. So give before you ask. So giving value could be a cheat sheet. It could be a webinar. It could be a free training video. Um, mm-hmm. It could be a free um, discovery call. I don't know how many coaches you have in your, in your audience, but it could be a free discovery call. Something where you are giving first and you're giving value first. And then you are capturing their information. What, and this is, again, once you have that information, then you can market to them over and over and over and over again. And so your ad dollars are not about who's buying immediately, but who's going to be buying from me in the long run. Okay? So first we need to identify, then we need to capture those leads. Um, we, have, we need to somehow offer value first. And then the third thing is, and a lot of people forget this, and it's so funny, they're like all in the lead capture and they forget to convert them. Right. Now that you have them, you have to make the sale. So what is your offer? When are you going to present your offer? Um, How are you communicating your offer? And that's where um, um, copywriting comes in in the play. Hmm. Copywriting is, it's basically writing, and, and it's not always writing, it can be video like this. It's it's how you communicate in order to close the sale. 
um, right. and usually written down. Copywriting is, you know, copywriting. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the way that you communicate your, to your potential customer so that they understand what it is you're offering and the value that it brings to them. It'll, you know, I've, I, I talk to way too many business owners who just think that their customer understands what it is they're selling. They mm -hmm. do. Well, sure, they know what I'm selling. They, I've, been, I've been posting this product over and over and over again. They know what it is. And they're making way too many assumptions. And I have clients that even talking with them for a while, I'm making assumptions about what their, their product is until they say something. And I said, see right there, you just really explained it to me. Mm. Now I get it. You know, before I understood that you have this product, but I didn't understand why it applied to me or, or okay, that's somebody else. But when you say it that way, then I'm like, wait a minute, that's for me. You know, I'm, I'm your coach and it's for me. Yes. <laughs> and, and so, and that's a lot of the work I do with people is trying to pull that out and, and trying to really get people to, um, to be able to communicate well with their customers and actually be able to convert those sales. And then the last one is just to scale it. So you either need to scale it up that you're bringing more leads in and converting more customers, or you need to sell to your current customers more often or you need to sell them higher ticket items so that you're increasing your average sale. And that's how you actually grow a business. So once you get the first three working, then you can pull in these other elements of scaling it up. But a lot of people are worried about scale when they're starting out. You yes. don't have to worry about scale yet. <laughs> yes. You're just trying to get clear about what your business is, capturing those leads and then converting them. That's, that's your business. That is the business of marketing. And so that's, that's usually where I start with people is, is just try to go through those four steps and then we see where, um, what's working for them and what's not. Nice. Very nice. I love it. Um, <clears throat> I work with my clients in a similar way. And so, um, it's funny when you say that, uh, clients worry about scaling, you know, I, I talk to clients, all the potential clients, all the time that say, <laughs> I would like to make $10,000 a month in the next three months. And I'm thinking to myself, but you don't have a business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, I can't tell them that because I really want to encourage them to start slow. So I have to say, wait a minute, let's back up a little bit here and let's, let's put some hooks in place first. Sure. But <clears throat> it's interesting that, um, and, and this is a very well uh, thought out system, very um, logical, very simple. Um, I love that, Ali. I love the way you do that. Now, you mentioned something Okay, so, and I had to write this down to, to remember this. You talked about people who were trying to sell out the gate mm -hmm. um, and without really having nurtured or, right. or really given anything away, given value away to their community or their audience so that people will know what they're capable of. Um, is there a sweet spot between those people that are trying to sell out of the gate? Because you don't want people to do that, especially when they're new in business. Mm -hmm. And so you teach them not to do that. But what about those people who, although they've had a business for a while, they are afraid to even ask for the sale. They just keep giving and giving and nurturing gi forever. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there a Especially when kids gotta grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so I I draw the line with the email address. Once I have your email address, then I'm going to start selling to you. Now I can still use those emails to nurture nurture that relationship, and I'm going to continue to use Facebook to nurture that relationship. But once I have your email, as far as I'm concerned, it's fair game to start selling to you. 
and you can, like ignore, can ignore my emails and that's fine. Um, but by the time I have their email, I have given and they've been able to experience me and they've been able to, so with the rabbit toy business, we do a, um, we do a giveaway. So we'll say, um, we've done big giveaways and we've done little giveaways. Um, right now we have like an evergreen weekly giveaway that we do, but we'll mm -hmm. say we do a big giveaway and we give away a couple hundred dollars worth of toys, three winners and they get these Christmas toys. That's one that we're going to be doing coming up. Um, so they're Christmas toys for rabbits. And um, when we do that, um, first of all, only people who are interested in the product that we sell are entering into that giveaway. So I'm capturing their email. But they also think we're really cool because, yeah, we do have competitors and they're on Facebook and all they're doing is saying, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. And we're saying we're going to give first. So when they raise their hand and say, I want to win this thing, then, then I know they have a rabbit. I know they're interested in toys for their rabbits. So once I have that email address, usually I'll wait until the giveaway is done before I start to pitch them and they realize that they didn't win. Now the biggest value I can give them is to make an offer to them. Hey, you didn't win, but here's a special coupon that you can use that's, mm. that gets you these same products for a, for a discount. So that's their game at that point. If I give away, so like I have my 30 Facebook, uh, engaging Facebook post ideas and people will download that. I know that those people are really wanting to learn how to engage on Facebook. So they're selecting themselves and saying, yes, I want to know more. When, when they do that, they're raising their hand and saying, I need help. And I downloaded this for help. Well, I can help them even more by making an offer to them. Mm -hmm. And so once I get that email, then I know that these are people that are serious about making some sort of forward motion in their business. Um, same with the rabbit people. I know that they're interested in rabbit toys. So, um, so now I feel comfortable with pitching and, and making offers to them. Um, and I don't worry about having to nurture them for another six months on that list. They have a problem right now. I can solve their problem right now. They trusted me enough to give me my, their email address. And so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of play this, not a game, but kind of this dance of here's value. And by the way, I'm selling something or here's something I'm selling. And then the next one is more value. So the, the, every email has some sort of offer in it. Always, 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 but sometimes it's a free offer. So I'm nurturing a little bit more. So they're like, Oh, there's a free webinar. This is really nice of her to give this to us. You know, they're already on my list. So then I'm either selling them in the webinar or they're going to get an email the next day that sells them the thing that I just covered in the webinar. So yeah, once they get that email address, your email should be selling your emails, the whole purpose. So Facebook is where the relationship is, is nurtured. Email is where the selling is done. That's how I like to differentiate it. Does that help? Yes. I love that. Never thought about it that way, that, Email is where you kind of draw the line. I like that because yeah. I'm sure you have had those clients where they're just afraid to sell. Sure. So they just give and give and give and give. And, and they're afraid to email too. Yes. People came onto your list because they want to know more about you. They were looking for value from you. And then you're so afraid to give them that value that they're looking for that you're, you're pulling your punches and you're holding back. I, I've got a client that I just talked to this morning has an email list of 3,000 people. Wow. Has nice. thousands of people on her Facebook page, has thousands of people in Facebook groups, and she does not send any emails yet. Oh, wow. And so that's what we're working on. <laughs> oh, wow. And like she's sitting on this nuclear uh, generator of potential yes. business. And she's been afraid to sell them and communicate with them because she doesn't think they want to hear from her. And her, they do. They want to talk more and more and more about what it is she offers. And she's like, yeah, but maybe I'll, I'll be bugging them. They, yes. You're not bugging them. If, they're, if you're bugging them, then they're unsubscribing. And you know what? They were never interested in the first place. Right. Selecting themselves out. So don't be afraid that if I try to offer something, people are going to leave my list. Good. Let them go because they weren't really interested and they weren't ready. That's now, right. Sending them emails about your ham sandwich every day. <laughs> but, uh, and I don't email every day all the time. There are times I do every day and other times I give a little bit more space. Right. Um, but 
but they're there for a reason and they're there because they need help with something. Mm -hmm. and yeah. The greatest value you can offer is to offer to help them. Absolutely, Allie. I love that. You, uh, you hit that right, right on the head. And I hope that a lot of women who are listening to this, hopefully you caught all of that. That is amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, these are strategies. I'm going to host um, some guests towards the end of the year so that you could have actual strategies, actual marketing strategies and resources. You can use Ali as a resource to start your 2019 off with a bang. Because mm -hmm. you, you're listening to this. You can put some of these strategies in place. Um, you can reach out to Ali. You can join her group. You can begin to really get some traction in 2019 and not feel like, oh, I don't know where to, where to go or what to do. So please um, listen up for sure. Now, a simple question, Allie, can the right marketing, and when I say the right marketing, I mean, what I mean by that is the marketing that keeps you, keeps your business moving forward, mm -hmm. bringing traction in your business. Can the right marketing help you make the sale itself simpler? Because yeah. selling is a pain point for a lot of people. A lot of people just, I don't like to sell. Mm -hmm. Whether they realize that they sell every day anyway. But um, can the right marketing help to make that simpler? Yes. So in, in my view, sales and marketing go hand in hand. Marketing, really, the definition of marketing, I, I should have it in front of me here. But basically what marketing is, is preparing them for the sale. If you view marketing that way, mm. then I am preparing them for the sale, and then you actually go for the sale. So, so not all sales is marketing, and not all marketing is sales, but the two do go together, and there are, is sales within marketing. So, um, so, yes, marketing should be preparing, mentally preparing the person for the sale, um, and, and that's where the relationship really comes into it, and, and it's not just the relationship, but it's also the awareness. So people buy what's in front of them and by being in front of them over and over and over again and um, showing yourself as the expert, showing yourself as the, um, as the go-to person that you know you can solve these problems. Marketing is as simple as getting on a video like this and saying, you know, I was just talking to a client this morning and she has these 3,000 email addresses. And, and, you know, we were talking about how she can leverage that. And I'm really excited about how she's going to explode her business. Now, while that sounds like I'm just telling a story about a client, what that's doing for the person that's listening is saying, Allie knows how to help people grow their business. Allie seems to have all of this stuff together where I'm really, really confused. Allie's been able to help her other clients. Um, so then when I email them and say, Let's do a one-on-one -on -one call, which the one-on-one -on -one calls are sales calls, really, the, the discovery call. Mm -hmm. um, if you need extra help with your marketing, if, if you're really, really stuck and you want to talk, schedule a time to talk with me. They're already prepared mentally. They've already put me in this place that I'm the expert. Right. At that point, I'm not even really selling them. I am diagnosing their problem and offering a solution. It's up to them whether they want to buy or not. And so many people have it in their heads that you have to be that sleazy used car salesman that like buy now or else it's going to go away forever. And, and we don't like that because it doesn't feel genuine and it doesn't feel real. Mm -hmm. so when you set yourself up and they see you over and over and over again, establishing yourself as an expert, no, seeing you giving um, and you should, there's things you should give away and there's things that you shouldn't give away because sometimes you can devalue yourself. Um, but they see that you're giving and they see that you're being really cool and they see you solving other people's problems. That's all the marketing. That's all marketing that, and, and Facebook is just a vehicle for that. And email is a vehicle for that. Um, Instagram is a vehicle for that. Then by the time they get on the call with you, they're already mentally bought. They've already bought into you. You're just now making the offer. 
and saying, if this is right for you, this is what I'm offering. And that's one of the easiest sales to close. Now, for some people, they just can't afford it. And that's fine. And usually what I get is like, I am so sorry, I can't afford this. I want this so bad, which is why I created the mentorship program, uh, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So that people that couldn't afford my one-on-one -on -one high end coaching still would be able to access the information that they needed. But at least you're coming at them from a, I'm here to help you. And this is how I can help you. And it's, it's, a, it's a yes or no from them at that point. And it's not the sleaziness to it. You, you don't have to feel like you don't have to feel like you're making anybody do what they don't want to do. They already want you by the time they get on that call. And that's why marketing is powerful. They already want rabbit toys by the time I make a rabbit toy offer. I've already made that desire. They have that desire in them. They've seen it and they're seeing it not in a skeptical light because I'm giving it away. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I put a post up that says this thing is for sale, they're looking skeptical. That person's just trying to sell me something. If I'm giving it away, then they allow themselves to imagine owning it and how cute it would be and how much their rabbit would love it. So then when I make the offer, they're like, yeah, I really want that. And so <laughs> it's much easier, way easier once you do marketing. Very nice. Allie, um, and Allie just gave you like a ton of value. Um, this interview has been one of the interviews where um, – um, our guest has just given a ton, a ton of value. And she, that's what I like about Allie so much is that, and I'm in her Facebook group, is that she gives a ton of value. And she is a prime example of giving first and then asking for the sale. She, I already know what I'm going to get. I, you know, I was just telling her prior to us getting on this interview that I said, oh, Allie, I need to be in your mentorship group and I haven't joined yet. So I'm going to join right after this podcast. And so, um, because I want to be in that group and I'm not just telling her that, you know, to be fluffy. I really want to be in that group because I know how much she gives away. Yes. So I know what I'm going to get when I get in that group. I'm going to get all my questions answered anytime I need it. It's like having, like I said before, that's marketing guru in my back pocket that I can use whenever I feel like it, you know, it's really, really nice. But Allie, I must say, um, I have to say this. I did not know that rabbits played with toys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I didn't give you time to react. To the I didn't know if you knew or not. Um, no. I, I mentioned it sometimes in my group and it's in a lot of my um, free workshops that I do. Um, but yes, normally when I say it, I say we manufacture and sell toys for house rabbits. I pause and wait for the reaction. <laughs> so when I do it on a webinar, I'll say, you know, we manufacture and sell toys for house rabbits. And yes, rabbits live in the house. Yes, rabbits can be potty trained. Yes, rabbits play with toys. And yes, we've actually made a living out of this for the last, you know, 16 years. Oh my God. Those are all the questions I have to answer every time. <laughs> And what's amazing, you know, thank you for that, but wouldn't, I want my audience to really think about this. Um, Allie is a marketing and strategy coach now, but that's not where she started her marketing with, because I'm sure the rabbit toy niche was not an easy one to get into and market. So she started with something so much more difficult. So can you imagine the kind of help that she can give <laughs> something that's so much easier, like coaching or, or just, you know, just entrepreneurship in some other area? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, so the people I'm able to help the most are people who market to a community. Mm -hmm. so whether that be a community of rabbit owners or whether that be your own local community or whether that be a community of um, somebody that you're coaching, of people that are trying to do a particular weight loss program. Um, that is a community. And whether you have that community already or need to grow that community, um, that's really, that's what I've learned from marketing to rabbit owners, is that community is huge. Having, having that group of people that all raise their hand and say, I belong to X community, I am a rabbit owner, and identify themselves that way. I'm a house rabbit owner. 
because um, there are a lot of rabbit owners that are not our clients. And, and that's the other thing is, is really getting very clear about who, who our customer is and who our customer isn't. Okay. Very nice. Yes. That's a huge, huge nugget. Now, Allie has a uh, free gift for everyone on the call today. It is 30 engaging Facebook post ideas. And I will get that up. She will have a page on my site, which is kimwigginscoaching.com slash podcasts. And you will see her free gift and all of her information there so you can get in touch with her. Now, as I mentioned before, Allie has a Facebook group, which I'm in. So I know it's, you've got to check out her Facebook group. And that Facebook group, Allie, is? Grow Your Business. I can see now I got to think of the name of it. I got, um, so it's Grow Your Business, Small and Local Business Marketing, um, Small and Local Business Marketing and Support Group, okay. I think is what it is. It's a big, long name. And actually, it's very strategic of why I have a big, long name. Um, but it makes it hard for me to remember off the top of my head. But it's Grow Your Business. If you look up Grow Your Business and Small Local Business Marketing and Support Group, I believe is what it is. It is an amazing group. D don't sleep on that group. That's an amazing, amazing group. I love it. She is always in there answering questions and really just helping um, and giving away tons and tons of value. Now. Um, I know I asked you um, prior to this if you had written a book. You should, Allie. You really should. I am in the process. I okay. have actually, I've got my outline, and it's actually going to be those four secrets, um, the four secrets to creating. Uh, we're specifically going to talk about online, so the four secrets to creating your online marketing strategy. And I thought I saw you posted in the group yes. somewhere that you were starting <laughs> You were working on a book. Yeah. So, yeah, that's great. The thing that I love about what you do and the way you do it is that it's very simple. You know, a lot of people can do the very same thing, but they make it so complex. And like you said, um, you know, I worked with a coach once that was a marketing coach, and she had me, she had me building funnels for weeks. And by the time I was done, I was like, I don't even know what I built. It was like, it was also confusing to me. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. And so I love the fact that simple is my thing. I love the fact that you keep it very, very simple. Yes. Um, okay. So <clears throat> before we sign off, I have two questions left for you I want to really ask. Now, I asked you about one of your favorite motivational quotes, and you said, <laughs> It's not really motivational, but my favorite business quote is, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes. I think that's a quote from Dan Kennedy, um, who's a big marketing oh, yeah. guy. Um, so I believe that came from Dan Kennedy. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And, and that's a perfect, I, I didn't realize how perfectly that would fit in here. And, and to me, that comes back to the simplicity, that you don't have to be the absolute best, biggest, the most amazing, like complex sales funnels. You just have to be good enough. You just have to be good enough to get yourself going. And the quote's really about um, um, being better than, just enough better than your competition. But in some instances, you don't have direct competition. Um, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So in, in, in the rabbit niche, there is nobody that knows how to market how we do. So we dominate our market. Um, and that's the, people try to copy us all the time. They copy our toys almost piece, piece <laughs> by piece, but they can't duplicate our marketing. Mm -hmm. And, and our customers are also not um, marketed to well much. So when they see good marketing from us, they're much more likely to respond. So it, it's not that you have to be the best or the perfect or whatever, but if you're going to go into a highly competitive niche, you're going to have a harder time and, and you're going to have to work that much harder to compete against people. And that's where it, really where I'm at right now with my marketing niche. Um, so the rabbit niche is way easier than being in the marketing niche because <laughs> everybody out there wants to sell you, mark, you know, sell, market you about marketing, right? Yes. Um, 
So I, I'm actually um, taking a different route and doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one and in-person. So I, I do a lot of speaking gigs. I do live workshops. Um, and when people see me face-to-face, -face, all the Facebook ads in the world can't compete with them seeing me face-to-face. -face. So that's how I become, that's how I'm able to stand out and, and stand out. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favorite quotes. I, I love it because it, it's sometimes you get bogged down and I have to have all of these things. Right. And when you really put it in perspective of your market and say, no, I just have to have that one advantage. There just has to be that one advantage there that puts me above where everybody else is. And that's the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. The one-eyed man is king. Yes. I love that. Oh, wow. Yes, I really do. Now, Ali, I want to talk quickly about your marketer in training mentorship program, the one that I'm going to sign up for. Tell us a little bit about that and um, yeah, take it away. Okay. So the uh, marketer in training, I call it MIT, which makes it sound really fancy and it also makes it hard for me to buy URLs. <laughs> Because MIT is obviously taken by a lot of people. Um, so the MIT mentorship program is really what I needed when I first started out. So I went back and I thought about what were the elements that I really needed in my life that could have helped me jump over some of those hurdles faster. So, you know, when you're marketing, when you're, when you're marketing your business and you're growing your business, you're taking these steps. And you know, you're taking these steps forward and sometimes you get stuck on a step for a while. And then it may take a year or two or, and then, okay, you're kind of past that step. What the marketer of the MIT program is, is helping people to leapfrog those steps. So those things, those learning curves that you get along the way when you're creating your business and you're growing your business, some of those you don't have to go through. And, and sometimes just by having somebody there to support you makes a world of difference. And I identify, I had four, I go back to four. There are four things that I know are essential that entrepreneurs need in order to grow their business. Absolutely essential. Number one is they need the information. So you need to know what you don't know. I needed that book. So I needed that book in my hands to, to open my eyes to say, oh, I'm supposed to be capturing leads. So information is a big part of that. So I, in the MIT program, um, we actually do a weekly workshop that is recorded um, and it's live. So people come on to the workshop. We have a specific uh, subject that we're talking about and then we do Q&A at the end. So if there's anything you don't understand, how it applies to your business, I'm very big on making sure that people understand and that I'm being clear and that I'm not confusing people um, and that they can walk away and say, I get it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's the information. And then we do have, um, we have my entire Facebook marketing boot camp is up in the membership area that, so all the information that you need in order to grow your online business is either there or it's coming. This is still a new program. So we've been adding new content all the time. The second thing people need in order to grow their business is a mentor coach, somebody to cheerlead them, somebody to help them, somebody to, to motivate them. When we want to learn karate, we have a sensei. Um, when we go to college, we have teachers and a lot of people just don't seem to apply that then to business. We've not been taught entrepreneurship. They don't teach that in school. So you need a teacher. You need somebody that says, here is the information. And if you have a question, raise your hand and I'll answer your question. And I'll help you see how this applies to you and what doesn't apply to you. Um, so you need to have somebody that can help guide you through that process and give you support. Number three is you need a community. That is non-negotiable. Um, so we are actually creating a network within the MIT program of uh, community members that they're people that creating small mastermind groups. And, and this is something we're still working on because it's a foreign concept for a lot of people. But entrepreneurs are some of the loneliest people on the planet. Oh, yeah. They, they, if you have a problem and you go to your mom or your sister or your best friend and say, oh, I'm having such a hard time with my lead magnet. And they're like, what? <laughs> when you have a success, oh, I just got, you know, 50 people signed up on my list. Okay. You need to have that support from your community. Um, it's absolutely essential. And going back to the mentorship thing, I, I totally like skipped over the coaching. Um, this program has 
weekly group coaching calls. Mm -hmm. so, so we have the training uh, for the information. Then we have weekly group coaching calls where you can actually come on and ask any question. You can say, Allie, I'm down to my last, my last 30 bucks. <laughs> what do I do? I need to make some sales now. And we will talk it through. Um, and as of right now, um, um, this is still a new program. So a lot of people that are coming on the coaching calls are getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, which is really, really great. And those are recorded and you can refer back to them. Plus there's the Facebook group where if you have any questions about, is this post, um, I posted this, it didn't work. What, what could I have done better? Or here's the, um, um, here's my idea for an ad for Facebook or a boosted post for Facebook. What do you think? And you need that feedback and you need to ask those questions. The Facebook group is there for that, for that consistent um, support as well. Then we have the community with the mini masterminds and the Facebook group as well is, is a place to actually start connecting with other business owners. And fourth is mindset. So we have not really um, um, started with any of the mindset challenges yet, but you need to have the right mindset in order to be an entrepreneur, in order to succeed as an entrepreneur. If you don't know how to make goals and if you don't start pushing yourself out of the box, uh, maybe this would have been a better, uh, inspirational quote is that our motivational quote is you can't get to where you want to go doing what you've always done and That's you've right. got to get pushed out of that box and you've got to get pushed out of your comfort zone and yes it's uncomfortable and yes it's scary but there's great things on the other side and until you learn to push yourself out you're never going to see it you're going to be stuck spinning circles in that same box so an example of a mindset challenge would be something like um, doing a, a five-day video challenge where we ask mm -hmm. you within the Facebook group to post a video every day with a prompt for each day so that you can become more comfortable with video um, online. A lot of people, a lot of clients that I do Zoom calls like this turn their video off and I say, no, turn it on. This is your practice. Because right. the more you see yourself and the more you get comfortable with yourself. Six months ago, I was not doing video. Because I'm like, I don't know, I don't want to be on video, I don't want people to see me. And just by forcing yourself to do it a couple of times and you realize it's not so bad, the world doesn't burn down. Like, no, nope. yeah. <laughs> I'm still alive and it was fine. Um, and, and honestly, they're seeing you the way you are. So, you know, they're not seeing anything weird. So, so that's something that we're, we'll be doing um, as we incorporate more of these mindset challenges um, into the program is just trying to push people and um, get them out of their comfort zone. And I'm also going to talk about how I journal, how I use journaling and how I use uh, goal setting and intentions and that sort of thing. So that is the MIT program. Um, for your listeners, I am actually doing a free 30 day trial. So um, this program is right now, it's $47 a month. This is a, this is easily a $97 a month program. The, the weekly group coaching calls alone, I've seen for hundreds of dollars a month. Um, I know some that are charging hundreds and you only meet once a month. Mm -hmm. so weekly group coaching calls alone make this an extremely valuable program. So right now it's only $47 a month, but you actually get to test drive it for 30 days for free. Um, and this is just really my way of one, thanking Kim for having me on. <laughs> um, and two, I'm trying to get, um, I really want to get that community built up. That's very, very important to me. And so I'm encouraging as many people and giving as many people as few reasons to say no. And, and I want to see you invest in you. I'm willing to invest in you. I am willing to do what I need to do to give you the support that you need to grow your business. But you need to invest in you first. Yeah. Um, so I want to give you no reason to say, no, I can't do that or I can't afford that. The first four calls alone could be life changing for you and your business. Um, and, and you get those for free. So, um, so yeah, it's at uh, local roots marketing forward slash mentor. Uh, I think Kim's probably going to have the link up for that too. Yes. And um, that one will give you the 30 day trial that you can, um, that you can then take advantage. Awesome, Allie. I will say that you're so right about that. Allie is like the real deal. Now, I can say that because I've been coaching for a while and I've had a lot of different coaches. I've been in a lot of groups. And <clears throat> this is what I like about what Allie has done. She has a coaching program 
that costs more than $47 a month. But everyone couldn't invest in that. And this is how I know she is authentic and real. She, like I said, she's the real deal is because she recognizes that and she says, I want to be able to impact business owners so that they can grow their business and do what they love to do. So there are people out there who can afford my one-on-one -on -one coaching and can work with me closely, but that doesn't mean I can help. I don't have to help everyone else who can't. So right. I'm going to start a program yeah. that gives them access to me at a lower price point. I love coaches that do that right yeah. after my own heart, because that means that you're not chasing just the dollars. You're really trying to right. make an impact in people's lives. Yeah. I love it. And, and thank you. And, and I've been seeing this trend and, and, you know, everybody who coaches coaches is saying to charge more. And I get that. If you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, your time is valuable. The impact that yes. you're creating is huge. The transformation is huge, but it was pricing everybody who needed it. Everybody who needed the, not everybody, because obviously there's some people that need the higher end coaching and then they can afford mm -hmm. it. But especially with small businesses, the people who needed it the most, that were struggling the most, and I can see, I mean, my empathy there, I can remember and I can feel it in me. I remember those feelings of, yeah. I just, I can't go to the conferences. I can't afford to go to conferences. So all I can afford is a $20 book at a time. And it's slow because all I'm getting is the information. I'm not getting how to apply it to me. I'm not getting support from a community. I'm not getting the feedback I need. And so I'm like, how can I do that in a way that one still values my time? Um, so, so I've been able to schedule it out in a way that, that um, I'm able to do this without devaluing my time. Um, but two, making it available to everybody else. Um, that everybody can afford it. And even at $97, I know that pushes it for some people, um, but that's part of making sure that people understand the value and invest in themselves with, with the program. So it will eventually go up to $97. But if you get in now, you're locked in at 47. So Very you, nice. Yeah, it, it will not go up for you as long as you maintain your membership in the program. So, um, so yeah, I encourage anybody, if Come on over and sign up for that. You get 30 days, 30 days, absolutely free to test drive, to ask me questions and to see whether or not this program is right for you. Love it. Allie, um, oh, I so appreciate that. We, I know we're going a bit long today, but this was so good. This is so much good information. One other quick thing I want to ask you about. Now, Allie has a uh, sales page up for this particular mentorship. But Allie doesn't have a website. Tell us about that, Allie, because a lot of my listeners get stuck on the fact that I got to have all this stuff in place mm -hmm. before I can open my business for sale. And Allie is running her business and rocking it, making awesome sales without a website. Tell us. Okay. About that. So, so I really want people to understand that the most important thing to do is make sales. And, and if you can do that without a website, then that's, then you're doing what you're supposed to be doing real quick. How I started out doing this is I had several people ask me, Allie, you got to show us how to do Facebook marketing. We're really confused. We don't know what we're doing. Local people. So I did a workshop and I did the workshop and people came up and said, can I have get more help? And I'm like, I don't know, I guess so. So, so then I created a package and I was like, yeah, you can get more help and here's how you can pay me. So a few people took me up on that. And then I had people ask me for this. And then I had people ask me for that. And as I created a demand for those things, as the demand was created, that's when I created it. So I didn't have a sales page up until, in fact, I don't even have a sales page up for my MIT program. I have an order page. I don't even have a sales page right now. It's been yeah. six weeks, yeah. but right. I talk to people and I sell them through talking to them and I do my free workshops and I do my free webinars and I pitch it there. So the idea that you have to have every last piece in place. Now, once I have my sales page up, that's going to help me even more, but I have members without one. So that wasn't essential 
being able to communicate to people the value that you bring, whether it's video, whether it's a Facebook post, whether it's an email, however you do that, and then giving them the ability to pay you, that's really all you need. <laughs> and then you can add pieces and parts as you go along to say, oh, well, I would really like to write articles, but now you're making money. You don't have to write all the articles first before you make money. Make the money first and then start adding those additional pieces. I love that, Allie. Oh my gosh, yes. I hope that my audience heard that. She is a living testament of that because she started making the money first and then started putting the other things in place. Sometimes we waste a lot of time trying to make it all perfect and make it all right and make it all so professional. Yeah, I have to have a professional website or a professional business card. And Yes. Yeah, my business cards suck. <laughs> But they work. <laughs> and, and now that I'm making some money, I can make it better. And, and here's the other thing is when you're first starting out, you may not be entirely clear who your market is, what your offers are. When I was first starting out, I'm like, I don't know. I'm just going to go with what people are asking. What do people want? What are they asking for? And then I'm going to create programs around that rather than coming in and saying, I have it all figured out. Here's my program. Here's my website. Here's everything. You're going to waste a lot of time because you're, after a few clients, you're going to say, that's not really what they want from me. They want something else. Yes. And then you're having to change everything. So instead, I'm learning what they want first, and then I'm creating around them. Instead of yes. creating around me and my ego and what I think everybody else should want. There you go. That's <laughs> perfect. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. Allie, yes, definitely check her out. You will not be disappointed. I have one last question for you, Allie. I know we went a little long today, but it was great. Um, I, as we're wrapping up here, can you leave my audience with one tip, one action tip that they can get off of this podcast? Not that you have not given them enough already. <laughs> <laughs> one action tip that they can actually start today. They can put in place and just hit the ground running. Oh, one tip that they could get from today uh, or that they could start today. Um, you build a list. That's, that's like my biggest, uh, that's probably the biggest thing. That's, that's, what I, that's what I start with is trying to offer value in a way that you can build a list. And you can do this through something like MailChimp, even if you don't have a website up. MailChimp will give you like a landing page where people can go there and sign up. Um, it's almost like a little website that lives within MailChimp. You don't even have to have, like I use ClickFunnels and, and there's lead pages. You don't even have to do that. Just create an opt-in page and promise some kind of value. It can be a, a, a checklist yes. of things that people need. Something really simple and start giving that value out to other people and saying, hey, I created this for you. Don't overthink it, put some stuff together, maybe do five different ones and test five different ones and you know, whatever they um, start out with. Here, even better, create, go on a Facebook group, create a poll, put your ideas in somebody else's Facebook group. So it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be your own unless you already have a big one, but find out where are your customers congregating, create a poll and find out what they want. There you would you go. be interested in this? Would you be interested in this? Would you be interested in this? And then that you can do right now. You can go over there. You can create the poll right now. Then you can create the lead magnet to start capturing those leads because you know what it is they're interested in. When I was putting the um, MIT program together, I thought the information aspect of it was probably the least valuable. But when I did a poll, that was the most valuable as far as my customers were concerned. So when I... Wow. When I talk about it, I lead with the information because I found out that's what they really want. Getting very, very clear on what they want, not what you think they need is, is really important. So you can do that right now and, and just start building that list. You know, do a poll, create a magnet, build a list. I know that's a lot of things, but quick tip would be to build the poll first. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. prepared for the question, so I had to think about it, but that's probably the, the best thing you could do right now because that's going to give you a ton of information. That was a really great golden nugget, Allie. And if you get confused with build the poll, uh, create the list, hop over to Allie's Facebook group. Yes. She'll ask her about it. She'll walk. I will you. help you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will help you until. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Allie, for being our guest today. You have provided so much value to our audience. And I am just over the moon thrilled for them to hear this and be able to just write down all your nuggets and listen to this again and put them in place. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me on and letting me, uh, letting me talk for a while. I love to talk and I love to be able to help people. So I love it that um, I'm able to reach new audience and help people and, and um, really encourage them to embrace that role of marketer, that it's not that scary. Um, it, it can be very, very simple. You just need to, to embrace it and, and, and own it. Awesome. And, and I would love when you get your book up, I'd love to um, have you back to talk about the book and maybe sure. we could do something really special with the book for our audience. So that sure, Absolutely. All right. Well, this concludes this episode of Bye Bye 9 to 5 podcast. Definitely um, download it, like, share, comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Join me for the next episode and have a super fantastic day. Bye. Bye. This episode of the Bye Bye 9 to 5 podcast has ended, but it doesn't stop there. Be sure to subscribe for more strategies and advice to help you move from employee to escape renewer to have the kind of success you have always dreamed of without sacrificing family or time. And don't forget to rate and review us so we can continue to bring you the best content possible to motivate and encourage you on this journey. See you on the next episode.